This video is the 2019 scholarship exam. Um, this is going to be question three. All right, question three. A mass M is connected to an inextensible light ray. It just can't stretch. Light ray of length L. Length L is allowed to swing down from horizontal position to the vertical position shown in the diagram. Show the maximum tension in the rope is 3 mg. Um, so this is, we've got gravitational potential at the top, and then we've got entirely kinetic at the bottom. Um, so we have uh, mg, and the height gained, this is L from here to here. So this mgl is going to be equal to half mv squared. So this is the energy consideration. And now we've got the forces consideration. Because um, it's asking for the maximum tension. So at the bottom, we'll, we'll draw a free body diagram. So we've got, uh, draw from here, we've got tension, Ft. Um, and we have gravity, let's put a wee cross there, Fg, and because it's going in a circle, Ft must be bigger than Fg, so the tension force must be bigger than the gravitational force. Um, reason being is the net force has to, has to be greater than zero, um, and that's got to be equal to the centripetal force, which is Fc. So we can write a statement, um, Ft minus... F G because our vectors are opposite direction equals F net, which is the center pointing force um, F C. So in other words, if we rearrange this, we get F T um, is equal to mass times gravity plus uh, M V squared over L because essentially it's R. This is this is the radius, but we'll just, it is L, because it's given to us like that there. Um, and now what we wanna do is we're gonna go, well, we're trying to figure out in terms of just mg. So we're probably gonna to have to use this formula here um, and substitute, substitute it into um, the v squared here. So we're gonna have v squared is gonna be equal to uh, times the size by two. So two, cancel out the, uh, the masses, um, gl, look at that, two gl. Now we'll substitute that into here. So we've got mg plus m, and now instead of being v squared, it's gonna be uh, 2gl, 2gl over l, um, and as we can see, this equals 3mg. And then we'll just write down here, ft equals 3mg. Um, there we go. Right, next question. Explain why the length of the rope does not affect the maximum tension. Well, we can see here in, in the formula, um, the maximum tension, at, which is going to occur at the bottom, um, is, or is equal to three times mass times gravity, and there's nothing to do with the length of the rope whatsoever. Um, and the reason being, I'll pause it and I'll write a full, try like comprehensive explanation and then explain it. Right, so I've made a bit messy, but as the length of the rope increases, so does the velocity as V equals two. I'm just kind of quoting the formulas up there, two, uh, square root two GL. This centripetal force, I'm a bit, shouldn't have really used centripetal force. This is about the only time I've ever been able to justify use of the word centripetal force. It's really tension, but it's the net force that I'm looking for. So maybe I should have said net force, um, which is centripetal force. Anyway, in this case would increase, however, the radius increases as well, because um, we're talking about increasing length. Canceling out this increase is, and I've just write the re written the rearranged formula, Fc um, equals mass times, this would be velocity, but I've just substituted in um, 2gl, or square root 2gl squared um, divided by L, um, leading to max tension that only depends on mass um, and gravity. I feel like I probably could have, at the start, maybe elaborated that um, the only change in tension that can occur um, is due to a change in centripetal force um, because the mass and gravity are obviously going to be keep, keep constant. Maybe I should have started with that, but ah, that's all right. Um, right, next question. The rope is replaced by a piece of extensible I don't even, yeah, stretchy rubber, uh, stretchy rubber, um, spring constant K of the same length L. Show the maximum tension, tension reach in the rubber when the mass is allowed to swing down as given by um, this crazy formula here, where L is the unstretched length of rubber and X is the maximum extension of the rubber. Um, so again, we're gonna have our free body diagram. Um, I'll just chuck it off to the side. We're gonna have tension force. I'm gonna, 
we just have to call this T. Always, I always use like use FT, but whatever, because I've used T max here, um, and this is going to be um, down here is going to be F G, and then again I'm going to go F oh, stuff. I'm going to go T um, minus F G. Maybe I should put the T max, but yeah, it's, it's implied. It's implied. Um, equals um, F net. Always like to put F net, which equals F C, just to solidify that the net force is the center pointing force. Um, and then rearranged, we have T is equal to, so the tension force is equal to F C plus F G. Pretty much the same from before, and that equals M G, so it's mass times gravity. Um, so that's the, oh, this is the gravitational force, um, plus mv squared over, now the radius has changed, the radius has changed from L to L plus X, because we've added a little bit extra, we'll just stretch down a little bit more and that distance is X, and you can sort of see here, ooh, ooh, we've got brackets L plus X, that's probably gonna come into here somewhere, um, and it probably will. So this is the force consideration, and the other consideration we need to take into fact is energy. Um, when we did this over the page, we, we, we had a force consideration and an energy consideration. So here we're going to have MGH, but H is going to be L plus X. Um, and because we've, like, we've, stripped, we've gone down a little bit extra, um, and that's going to be equal to half M, ooh, MV squared um, plus, and now the spring has got a little bit of energy in as well because it's stretched half um, KX squared. Now, what do I want to do? I want to rearrange this. Um, so, I want to get rid of the velocity, the, the half mv squareds. Um, and there's a trick to getting rid of this that I'll, sh that I'll go over soon. Um, that once you get down to it, you're like, oh, it's pretty clever. Um, so we'll rearrange this here um, for mv squareds. So we're going to have tension on the times. I'm going to subtract both sides. Oh, times both sides by L plus X, so L plus X. Um, and then I'm gonna move the MG to the other side, so it'd be minus MG, and that would have been L plus X. Um, and that is gonna be equal to, um, we've got equal to MV squared. MV squared. And now, um, what have we got? So now we've got that. Um, and now we're going to have, I'm going to sort of put a break here. I'm going to rearrange this in terms of mv squared. So I'm going to have, I'm going to times everything by 2. So I'm going to have 2mgl plus x. Um, and then I'm going to have minus uh, kx squared. Um, and that is going to be equal to mv squared. So now we can see that this is going to be equal to that. And we're going to do some sneaky cancellations. Um, to get rid of some things. So I'll just chuck it down here. Tension is equal to L um, plus X. I hope you can see that. Here we can I shift it up a little bit. Um, minus um, MG L plus X. And you're probably wondering why I haven't got rid of these terms here, but I'll get to that soon. Um, and that is going to be equal to 2MG L plus X minus KX squared. Now I'm going to add these two together and I shall, shall I do that? Yeah, I'll do that actually. Right, so now yeah, it's just going to be easy. Tension. Hmm. Yeah, I'll do that. L plus X is equal to, and then we're just going to add this whole thing to both sides. So it'll just give me 3 MG L plus X. And you're probably thinking, oh, there's the top line um, minus KX squared. Now, this is where I got stuck for a second. And then I remembered um, a trick from last year and the way to explain it as well. So in the 2018 scholarship exam, question four, there's a question where you have two springs that are different. They have different 
spring constants, but they're attached together. So you've got two springs, you know, there's my one spring, two spring, they're attached together and they stretch out. Um, and the trick to understanding the whole entire question is that the tension force along the whole entire string is the same, or on the top of the whole entire spring is the same the whole way across. So all the way across, the tension force is the same. So that implies that we have the tension, and this is just, um, remember, F equals negative Kx. Um, yep. So now we have the tension is actually equal to Kx, or negative Kx. Now this is what we're going to use to substitute into that. Um, we're going to substitute, might make that just, uh, just realize a little hiccup with this. This is actually positive um, due to the way I've set up my vectors. That's a bit of a, yeah, man of a bit of, not a mistake, but just a mis-explanation. I sort of know this is positive because when I just quickly did this in my head, if this is, this was negative substituting this in, I wouldn't get to the end. Um, and you can work it out yourself if this is if this is negative. It's because this vector here um, is also up. They're in line with each other. Yeah, I can't quite think of a good explanation for why that's not true. All I know is the the tension force for that little like extended bit is going to be this, and we're going to substitute that into here. So we're going to have T equals L plus X is equal to 3 M G L plus X um, minus, and now we're going to substitute. This is going to be tension. There's a max, this is a max tension as well. This is the same tension all the way through. So tension um, T X, and now we can see we can shuffle this over to the other side. Um, so we have. Tension L plus. Now, what I'm doing is um, this would be T bracket L plus X plus TX, and I'm bringing in the common factor. So I'm pulling out the common factor of all of it and putting it to the front and just going plus 2X. Um, and if you expanded this out, it would be the same as going TL plus X plus TL plus TL. Uh, no, TL plus TX plus TX, which would be the same as that. And that's going to be equal to. 3m 3mg l plus x um, and now we can see pretty clearly that t max is equal to 3mg l plus x divided by l plus 2x there we go that is the only sort of hiccup with this whole entire um, derivation Maybe I should have taken more care to probably explain that, but I think further up here, um, I lost. Well, I should have taken more care with the directions and, and the side, the, the like the signs of my vectors um, to say that this, because normally this is force equals negative kx, um, and that's only because the force vector is the opposite direction to the displacement vector. Um, but I suppose in this case the displacement vector doesn't really matter at all. It's just asking for this. This is just net tech, this is just net tension. Um, so yeah, maybe you can just forget about that. Right, last one. Explain why, despite the falling, despite the mass falling at greater distance, the maximum tension in the rubber is less than the maximum tension in the rope. Uh, right, I'll just pause um, and explain, and then just yeah. Right, so I've said, I've written the formulas here, but the tension is equal to mass times gravity times, this is essentially the centripetal force. Um, and then I've written the energy consideration, um, mg L plus X, I was originally gonna write L, but L plus X equals half mv squared plus half kx squared. Um, so essentially gravitation potential is now equal to um, kinetic energy plus spring potential. So I've said, the, oh, I skipped a line just because whatever. The mass velocity uh, reached by the mass will be less due to the sum of the gravitational um, energy going to spring energy. This is the only like this is the only answer you could possibly get from these equations. Um, I'm not convinced of it entirely, but I know if I put numbers in, it would spit out and it would be less. So I can just double check it with my calculator if I was actually on the exam and I was freaking out. Um, 
this reduced velocity reduces the centripetal force, thus decreasing the overall tension. Because we can see the only way to de decrease the overall tension is to decrease the centripetal force, and the only way to do that is either increase the length by a huge amount. Well, we could either adjust the numbers down the bottom or we could just adjust the velocity, but we can see that by adjusting the velocity, by decreasing that, uh, and we know that some of the originally all the energy was just going from gravitational potential to kinetic, but now we know energy is going from gravitational potential to um, kinetic plus spring energy. Um, right, not entirely convinced with that, but I know that's the only way you could do it.